interface uh, uh, this way uh, was localized. For the HTML files, we use this uh, same library uh, also uh, <coughs> extracted uh, the text uh, with uh, the HTML 2 PO from the translation toolkit and uh, it was lo lo <coughs> the lo uh, localization was done with uh, jQuery with this li uh, library. So the other problem was when the UI get richer, uh, we had many strings to translate, but those strings were already translated in the LibreOffice core. So the idea was to leverage as many strings as possible from uh, LibreOffice core, and here came the uh, idea of, uh, instead of uh, having the, the strings uh, literally in the JavaScript, we refer them with uh, their uh, Uno command label, and we can this way <coughs> leverage uh, strings uh, from the LibreOffice core. Also uh, with other script, we extract uh, some uh, other strings from LibreOffice core, such as uh, status bar, uh, messages, and language names. So uh, the result was that actually very few strings uh, remain to be localized. The next uh, uh, version of LibreOffice Online, we had these uh, tunneled dialogues, which are basically pictures coming from the core, <coughs> and uh, obviously we needed uh, language packs uh, installed on the server side uh, in order to see the, the localized dialogues, but the problem that we had to solve was that uh, in the case of collaborative editing, <coughs> one user uh, sees, for example, German, the other user sees, uh, for example, uh, English uh, user interface <coughs> by editing the same document, so the language switching by view uh, had to be solved at the core. There are some open problems that we are uh, working on currently. <coughs> For example, the language lists are uh, cached. Uh, these lists uh, populated at startup uh, with uh, English strings, and uh, they remain English regarding of the user interface language. <coughs> so we have to uh, cache uh, language uh, dependent list uh, per view. The other problem was that uh, in some uh, tunneled uh, pop-up menus and dialogues, uh, uh, also <coughs> there are the English, uh, you know, command labels that uh, are uh, coming in. So the next uh, issue to solve is uh, to have a uh, um, different localized uh, configuration per view. One more minute. Yep. So this is uh, the same uh, uh, <coughs> demonstrated with the, with, with the charts. So the uh, UI is in German, but uh, unfortunately the chart local pop-up is in English. And uh, the last uh, and probably the hardest problem uh, to solve is the calc spreadsheet function names. So calc uh, expects uh, uh, the same language for uh, each view, so it, uh, it is uh, probably the most difficult problem to solve, to switch the language of the spreadsheet functions per view. So thanks for your attention, that was all. Okay. Yeah. And Svante, if you... Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Um, I don't see it here, but it should work. Okay, the king is dead, long live the king. I want to talk about the OLS toolkit, and the OLS toolkit has been an Apache incubation project that was now stopped, and we are moving now to the Document Foundation. Applause, thank you very much. Yeah, finally. So, do you know anything about the OLS toolkit? Yes, you might, because you might. Um, moderator, please. <laughs> um, wait a minute. Oh, wait. Ah, here we go. It's just a matter of time. All right. So, you know the ODF validator. The ODF validator is a web front end, and you can use it uh, in the back in the, in the back end as well. So, for um, obvious validation. And, um, but it's... I, don't need it. I speak louder. Hello. Okay. 
But um, so instead, you there's much more on the order of two kit. For instance, is that the way I have to do it? Yeah, no, other way. Uh, technical support, please. <laughs> ah, here, here's the left button, right. The other way around. Um, yes, and the centerpiece is the ODF DOM. We might call it uh, ODF lib, like XML lib something. It's a centerpiece, it's just an, a library that is, um, that is being generated from the schema directly to, to support any developer to, um, to work with ODF. And, uh, depend on this is the ODF validator, but also the XLT runner. XLT is some scripting based on XML, but with, that, uh, with this uh, XLT runner, you can run directly the script on the ODF package with all the XML within, without the need to, to unpack it. That's just a usability function. Um, there was the simple API that was in fork from IBM, and we are going to drop it. Yes! <laughs> Finally, um, yes, because it's ugly, a lot of code copying, and uh, I, yes, it was um, basically a good idea of something bad development. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there they have to support something else. So this is how the, the basic way how this ODF lib, the ODF DOM is currently, uh, by, by separation of concern, of course, one the part is dealing with a package thing, right? It's a package layer, there has to be some package API. And then there's this um, content API that is um, being divided into parts, basically. One is dealing with the XML, which is dialect to DOM at the moment, but in the end it would be better to do it differently. Maybe not a DOM because it's uh, supporting, uh, using a lot of resources. And this user API in a semantic high level, which is on what I'm currently working on. But the most important thing is something that we are going to add in the 1.0, which is coming next. I always got a fuck on that. That's something that prototype by type had been funded. Um, that is something you drop in. It's, uh, it's uh, something, yeah. Um, the ODF DOM is now black box. You drop in a document, and you get an equal uh, valent of JSON changes, like the user had been added the document from the beginning uh, to the end. So you might ask, so why do you need it? It's the same thing, just in changes, because in the, we are currently doing nothing else for collaboration than zipping our source code repositories and sending to others, which is stupid. And the same thing is to send documents. So instead, it should be much better to send simply changes among uh, ODF applications. And the best way would be to standardize them so they are interoperable among them, because you're not able to work with of 365 and, um, and Google Docs and uh, LibreOffice Online. And it would be nice that we have a common semantic uh, level to exchange only this and not to look at the two documents and say, oh, what have you changed? And there's no way to answer that because we have not defined what a change is. So, and um, this module, of course you can do it this the other way around, and then you have to change that sort of thing. And this module is used to be um, used at the back end, so um, any web application could become an ODF application because they only have, they have to deal with uh, the, the changes and the part of changes that they are knowing. Um, I tried to give in CK edit. Um, there's some web editor, HTML editor, online HTML editor from Poland, Warsaw, um, which are quite successful, like tiny, uh, tiny something. All right. Um, anyway, um, this might become a next uh, prototype model to, to get uh, some ecosystem running to, to get this merging done and, uh, and so on. So, if I would be done right in the sunset and said everything is wonderful, so first thing is done, we have the TDF, that's great. Then, um, of course, ODF editors should not exchange documents. This is like we are sending no commits but uh, zip code repositories. And then, uh, of course, these ODF HTML editors become ODF editors, so we enlarge ourselves by using this in the backend. And finally, there would be an OASIS standard. Thank you for listening. Next is Björn. Oh, my. Leave it there and speak into that, it should probably not. Hello, yes. So uh, I want to talk about SW client or it, it dying, uh, which is what I talked about at the conference and gave you good reasons why it should die. Uh, I'm not going to repeat all those things. You can find them online in the slides and everything. Just a quick uh, update. So this is what SW modify SW client does. It's essentially an observer pattern. You have something to be observed and something observing it 
And if something changes in the modify, it tells all the uh, SW clients that uh, this or that changed uh, in form of a horrible S -S SFX pool item old and new and whatever. Uh, so it's uh, uh, horrible, but you can look at that up in the talk from the conference. Um, here's just a quick quick overview why this is horrible. Everything in uh, SW client, or an example, SW in, uh, as everything in writer is an SW client, because otherwise you can't be pretty much in writer, um, because these dependencies are there. And um, they re-register at something else, and also uh, you usually have a void pointer to the modify which then doesn't really point to what you expect it to point to. So uh, this might lead to very, very horrible bugs, which uh, we don't want. Um, and you can see this, that, for example, this assumption that uh, the thing that you're pointing to with a void pointer is the type that you once registered to happens still 96 times in, uh, in writer. So what I wanted to do instead is, instead of this, uh, have uh, something which we already have in, in the source, which is uh, SVT broadcast and SVT listener uh, instead, which does not do the horrible re-registering and, um, and, and void pointer to the observed uh, thing. And the tricky part is, um, Sometimes you want to have a signal that goes into the, the observed thing and need to have it uh, re um, find it out at the other end. And if you migrate things over to something else, um, you still have the signals going in the old mechanism. So you get someone call the uh, modify or uh, call SW modify uh, thing at the old S SW client. And, but you have a new setup and that wouldn't get the signal. So what I did is uh, I made an SW modifier that is also an SVT uh, broadcaster and if you send something in the old mechanism, it calls all the old clients in the old way and all the new ones in the new way. So um, this way you can migrate things from the edges of Varita, which is for example Unicore or access accessibility and slowly get rid of this huge ball of mud that you otherwise couldn't unroll. Um, so one thing that happened there is uh, this one. I caused a performance regression because I had um, made this uh, SW client that is also a broadcaster. Um, um, I had to introduce a virtual function and that made writer slow because mm, doing something uh, copy-pasting a huge text with um, many footnotes took 15 seconds before, now it takes 24 seconds. The real question to ask is why did it take 15 seconds in the first place? Yes. Then we found, I found a lot of things doing this, which is the listener just listens to the observable to find out if it dies. And uh, one question I want to ask into the audience, and I'd like to discuss with uh, other writer hackers if we should, in those cases, maybe just use a weak pointer, a shared pointer instead, uh, instead of using all this uh, crappy observer pattern. And yeah, that's essentially the one question. The other is already the performance uh, regression. I think how to handle that. I think we can, uh, I could either move it up the virtual function, uh, or I could, uh, uh, so that, that it's not a virtual and S, every SW client is, uh, um, is also an observed thing. So those are the two questions. Uh, if there are writer hackers here, I know there are. Uh, please discuss this with me and how to solve it. Thanks, guys.
see yet? Maybe this is yet. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Adam Kovac from Hungary. Uh, I'm working uh, in the team of uh, Gábor Kelemen with uh, Balázs Varga and uh, we are uh, fixing OXML bugs about charts now. Uh, so of course OXML is a Microsoft standard but uh, <coughs> Uh, we are fixing OXML bugs because some organizations decided to use OXML. An example, example for a bug, uh, you create a docx file and uh, create a, a chart, a line chart, uh, and uh, set some uh, line styles to it and uh, you save it and uh, reload it and uh, the line styles uh, converted to solid lines. Uh, of course we have already fixed this. This was only a, an example. I know uh, in this room uh, everybody is LibreOffice uh, professional but uh, <laughs> um, this slide uh, will be uh, only a, a little motivation for the uh, beginners because I hope uh, uh, there are uh, some beginners uh, uh, who uh, are watching the live stream now. So <clears throat> on your own, uh, it is not easy to uh, find out how to uh, fix a bug, but uh, <clears throat> The Document uh, Foundation has uh, <coughs> very well documented tutorials. Uh, if you uh, Google for uh, LibreOffice development, you will easily find it. And of course, uh, you can uh, uh, go to my blog, uh, libreoffice.blog.hu, and uh, <coughs> You can uh, use uh, Google Translate to uh, translate it from Hungarian. And uh, the translation is, is quite good, I guess. <laughs> so <coughs> it uh, describes uh, very easy steps how to begin from zero. Uh, some of our results so far. Uh, <coughs> For example, we uh, fixed uh, some word wrap error in the chart titles. We are talking about uh, OXML uh, export or import, DOCX or XLSX, such files. <coughs> this is about uh, custom properties of uh, data points. This was an export bug some appearance bug and uh, some other, other bugs <coughs> uh, about bar charts. Of course uh, we have fixed uh, some bugs so far but uh, those will be presented uh, in the next LibreOffice conference. <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> uh, and good luck for bug fixing to everybody who tries it. <laughs> Thanks. Maybe, maybe we can translate some things from your blog and put them on our Thank you. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I, I will look after this, so I'll contact you. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think the microphone gets interference from its own.
machine. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's more simple. So I can continue my uh, first presentation. Okay, thanks. It's okay. It's okay. Thanks. Okay, so I continue my first presentation and, and we'll sh I will show some interesting uh, examples about our bug fixing at Nice. In fact, uh, uh, these, uh, these, uh, will, uh, these are our uh, top four uh, bug fixes, but it's hard to select the, the best uh, uh, ones. So this is an uh, uh, OLE object uh, uh, view fix uh, and uh, this is a four or uh, yes, uh, three years old uh, bug, and uh, uh, this is the old uh, behavior of the uh, OLED object. If you click uh, on the picture, double click to, see, uh, to uh, try to edit the uh, uh, this uh, extra less, uh, X uh, uh, cell. It's it's a little bit hard because the zoom is is, is very bad, and if you click outside to close this one, it's, it's uh, uh, it, uh, uh, worse. So, and uh, after our fix, a double click, we are result uh, the same uh, zoom, and uh, it's, uh, in, in, for inter operability, it's quite a uh, good, good thing for our users, and uh, I will uh, change some cell for the next example, and uh, looking uh, outside, we get the original uh, zoom, and it is uh, working uh, in the exports too. So not only for import, uh, you can uh, check the uh, you know, our commits, but uh, in fact uh, we uh, will we have to do some uh, other fixes, changing the sheets, for example, and we are working on it. So uh, our next uh, example, it's uh, uh, copying between. Uh, a cog and a, a writer. I will show the next uh, example. This is a, a, a bug, bug uh, in the F Apache, or originally the OpenOffice.org bugzilla from 2004, but there is a double, uh, uh, a similar bug from uh, years before that, so 2003. With, uh, but this bug uh, has got uh, 108 uh, votes because it's very, very bad, the original uh, behavior. So if you want to uh, copy this uh, white net native table, uh, you get an OLE object. And sometimes it's very hard uh, to uh, uh, get a workaround because the normal way would be the, the, that, that after our fix, I will try to make an example. Yes, so if you select the cell, you will get you will get that you want, or for example, rewriting the original content of the cells. So it's a big step uh, for the comfortable uh, uh, connection between Kark and writer. And uh, there is a, for example, if you you uh, try to select one cell only from a table. The, there is a similar or smaller thing that uh, now it's a simple text insertion in the normal text. No, it's a old behavior, and this one the new one. So in, instead of a table, you will get a number only a simple text. So and uh, these are only two two bug fixes. So I will open a file here from other uh, bugzilla. It is uh, one and uh, yes, here too. And uh, this is uh, about, uh, yes, this is about uh, ch ch change tracking. It's a, a very uh, big area for our interoperability problems. And uh, I will show this bug. Is a, uh, after Tirana LibreOffice uh, conference, we fixed at this one. So if you, for example, uh, convert this paragraph to uh, heading one uh, uh, style, paragraph style, and uh, try to save the document or switch off the show mode, 
uh, you will lost this uh, uh, formatting. It's related to the uh, deleted paragraph before this paragraph, uh, track, it, track it, uh, deleted uh, paragraph, or try to, for example, center and make some uh, other changes here, and etc. The similar behavior in the code, uh, different parts related to uh, this, so there are a few uh, commits fixing this uh, behavior. I will show in the, the same in the new, uh, this is a, a daily build when I show you the similar, for example, heading style, maybe I will, but I've, sorry, this is the uh, old version of LibreOffice and this is one, the new, so uh, heading style, I switch off the show mode and yes, uh, the style is uh, red already, uh, it, it's right and uh, I will show a, a centering and uh, increase the paragraph uh, the spacing and uh, I get the same. So this is the third, uh, third, third uh, top uh, bug fix and uh, the last one, the last one for the last uh, minute, thank you very much. It's a it's my favorite, but it is a small uh, uh, problem for in, in our interoperability uh, uh, environment. But for uh, me, because I, I uh, work it with DTP, I try to use LibreOffice uh, for DTP. is an interesting thing. So if you change the uh, page style and try to uh, use some uh, background color, you will get the, this uh, in LibreOffice. This one. This is uh, the, uh, for the times where uh, if you want a full wall page uh, color, you change the pay, uh, uh, sheets in the, your printer with a color, colored version. So that was no problem in, in that time. But now with internet, etc., we need something much more uh, better because it typographically it's, it's a visual uh, uh, catastrophe using this one version. So a color and uh, oh, enter and uh, you can uh, change something in the style for example and uh, if you try to use multi-line or other options you will, you will uh, see that it is wall page coloring you can change the uh, for example gradient Try it with a, I don't know which is the, maybe this one, or this a little bit green, and uh, you will try to, if you, in fact, if you made a, a PDF version, for example, I, I, I hope it will show something, yes, uh, it's for a brochure or for something, uh, uh, thing. it's a very useful uh, to, uh, as it's a, uh, I think it's an important feature if you want to use LibreOffice for other things, for example, for internet or, or PDF. Thank you very much for your attention.